Let's get going on section nine. This is on what we're transitioning now into what we would say is inferential statistics. This is the initial part of that. Uh, it has an important concept called the uh, central limit theorem, which we'll talk about for, not in this video, but the next one. <clears throat> uh, so first we want to talk about just populations and sampling and those ideas, which we've probably alluded to already. You might have a general feel of that. Uh, but now let's talk about that in a statistics, you know, way. That's, what does that mean? So our um, section nine is, is a, a big section and then uh, uh, we'll go on to applying it. So inferential statistics. So what is what are we talking about? So the idea is that you have an entire population and sometimes that population is very small and you can, you can work with it and you can get data statistics from the entire population. Uh, in many cases, most cases, however you want to think of that, it, you, you can't. You, you can't get uh, uh, the, the actual mu, right? You can't get the actual mean. You can't get the actual standard deviation. Uh, you may or may not know whether the distribution is normal. Uh, most likely in many cases it is, but not necessarily. Uh, I might have mentioned, you might have heard me say on a video, uh, often on my exams, uh, they did not seem to be a normal distribution. You, they did not, they don't cluster in the middle. They're very spread out, very polar. Uh, <clears throat> that's what I hear from a lot of my colleagues as well. Uh, if you have enough students, then it becomes in the middle, but the, the, the nature of the, the community college and things like that, that's what we were, what I would see. Uh, so we want to talk about now, we can't find the entire population. So you don't always have to think sampling people's opinions. That's what I think comes to mind because that's what you hear all the time. Everybody thinks this about the president or this about the former president or blah, blah, blah. Or this is what we should do about um, different hot topics, right? But in statistics, a lot of statistics has nothing to do with people. Well, not nothing. I mean, it has to do with things and objects and, and, and how things work, like engineering aspect of it. There is a, a lot of statistics going on to analyze things. So every time I give you an example, I'm always going to give you the, you know, the people one, what people think maybe, or how, you know, this number of people's, you know, heights or uh, left-handed, right-handed, you know, that kind of concept. But we're always going to get into, you know, the widget, you know, making widgets and things like that and this in the sample of those widgets. So the impossibility of a population case uh, may come from sampling, you know, you're making millions of things, right? So um, I don't know, millions of little, I um, can't think of something specific right now, of little um, <clears throat> uh, washers, right? Tiny little washers. And you can't look at all of them. That would be, it would be as difficult to make them, it would be to analyze them. So you sample them, and there's a lot of information, a lot of data behind those that actual sampling of those that information. Okay, so um, so we'll talk about much of this stuff. The first part here, I would say, is heavily uh, read in, reading intensive. I will talk about it. I'll maybe try to tweak my videos a little bit so you see me talking more than me writing because I won't write as much. Uh, but let's get into the concept. So let's first talk about, let's first have an idea and let's, let's use the washer analogy. Yeah, there's a company that makes, uh, let's say, you know, millions of, of little tiny washers um, uh, every, every year. And you want to make sure that they are the right density the right size all of that and it and it you want to do it in a in a very because you could you know make millions or lose millions of dollars you want to make sure they're correct 
this has to do a lot in um, when things have to be very precise with what you, what you do. And let's suppose that uh, you do a sample of them, okay? And and you can do this. This is considered large sampling, so you can sample thousands of, of the millions that they do, and you analyze a couple thousand of them. So there's a lot of statistics behind or research and theorems behind those this what, what happens all right so first of all that sample needs to be random so let me show you some of this stuff here so good so let's write this down next okay so this is a definition i'm going to just erase this now i just keep that so you don't start writing right away so this is a definition of random sampling so suppose and and i i like to change up a little bit what the book says into my own words uh because i think they're better <laughs> and sometimes it's too wordy how they say it uh but keep the same gist of it of course this is also a good place to to use uh the ai stuff because it's very succinct and precise how they state stuff so uh, I've been using that just to see what it says. And so this is a good place to do that. Um, just, just type it in. Um, you have the free app um, you can use now. Uh, and it's very simple uh, inquiries about it. But this is my definition. <clears throat> uh, select in elements from a population, like the entire population, of size capital N. So again, lowercase uppercase are different so you're selecting in little n from entire population of n so you suppose the entire population is a million you're selecting maybe a thousand okay if each selection has an equal chance or equal probability of being selected then we say the sample of n elements was a random sample so i wanted to we talk about randomness and all that, but that's really what it comes down to. The flipping a coin, we pretty much all can agree, if it's a fair coin, it's not weighted on one side or another, uh, that that has an equal chance of getting a heads and a tails. <clears throat> Same thing as a, as a fair die. Uh, you can think of whatever. So <clears throat> that's the fundamental concept of a random sample. The way I just described that or define that here, that is called a simple random sample. That, so what I just described isn't always easy to do, frankly, a simple random sample uh, because of clustering and stratifying of things and uh, it's not, not always easy to have a simple random sample. Uh, let me give you an example of one that I saw recently uh, at, at the college that, that wasn't a simple random sample, but it was a random sample. It was, uh, they, they have accreditation, you've probably heard of accreditation, and they wanted to look at the online classes. And they wanted to, so the creditors wanted to look at the canvas shells of past uh, online classes. And those past online classes were selected. So there were 50 of them out of, you know, 300, 400. I don't know how many we have exactly, but, but around there, 500 or no. I forget exactly. Anyway, it's, it's less than 2,000. We have maybe 1,000 classes, 500. I have to look that up again. Anyway, <clears throat> so a large number of online classes. They wanted to look at 50 selected at random. Now... That may or may, depending on how they select them, that may or may not be a truly random sample. 50, theoretically, is enough to analyze what, what's going on. You can get a pretty good idea of, of what's going on if you, if you select 50. If it's down near 10 and it wasn't truly random, well, then you're going to get all kinds of skewed results, possibly. Uh, and you, you already are going to get skewed results this way because even if you select 50, you still could get um, a couple that were outliers, right? And it's always possible. 
Uh, but that's what they use to analyze the classes. They're looking for things like student to student contact or looking at things like faculty engagement and you know, all that kind of stuff that's, that's in the online situation, uh, which we are doing most of, by the way, in this class, especially for me making all these videos for you and then you being able to talk to me. Anyway, that was one example. Um, and then they have all these different possibilities. And I'm not going to spend time on lectures talking about all these. So this is what I want you to read, look up, use internet, whatever, use the books. I wrote, a, I copied a few from the books. Uh, you have different I concept. You have stratified random sampling involves selecting a simple random sample from each of the given subpopulations. So, so this is actually in education a good way to do it because you, you get a better feel for what's really going on. So you, you look at math and science. So this is actually, <laughs> this is what doesn't happen often when you look at random sampling. They look at most students uh, like online classes, apparently is what they sample, but they're not looking at Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, Calc 4, and they're not looking at learning, by the way, either. Uh, but they're not looking at those specifics. So what you might do to get a better feel of what's going on in your organization, your situation, is you look at, well, let's, let's analyze uh, math and then the rest of science. And then we'll look at the social sciences. You don't, you don't have to separate the sociology and psychology. That's going to be pretty much the same, same group of type of people that are taking those classes. <clears throat> the courses are run pretty much the same. Uh, so you might cluster what you want to look at, and then within those clusters, you do simple random sampling. Uh, but you also want to get a certain number of night classes versus day classes, and so you cluster those as well. So that's what we mean by clustering, and in and uh, well, that's the def next one for for cluster. I'll get to that. Um, so that's clustering. So so that that idea, that general concept that I just described, is still true. A simple random sample of cluster uh, from the available cluster in the population. Okay, so th the way they're defining these is I'm not going to be picky about any of that. It's very loose of how it's, things are defined at this level. That talking about that. This is more research design and getting a good research um, result, and that isn't specifically this class. It's very introductory in this class. We're focused more on the math and, the, and how things are calculated and, and what they mean after the calculation. Uh, so look at, um, look at these, read about those. One in K, systematic random sample involves the random selection of one of the first K elements in ordered population, then the systematic selection of every kth element thereafter so <laughs> that's very convoluted you have what here let me change this what all this means is you're just you're just doing this is um you know every 10 person basically so you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten this is like an ordered situation and then you are selecting every odd they say kth so you do kth and then you and that, that can work in some situations uh, but it, it's this is not simple random sampling none of this is simple random sampling so in the theorems and definitions you actually are assuming they're always simple random sampling this is just another way to get a good feel for it Let's talk about some situations where the, the, you know, the information you're getting is definitely not statistical analysis or research. So, so you use a lot of this, these concepts for research design and things like that. Uh, let's talk about things on the corner here like Yelp, uh, faculty, teacher evaluations. Okay, and then also no homework in this section. <laughs> supposed to do. Oh, I like that I didn't assign homework in this section I just want you to read about it and talk about it and think about it okay so let's talk about Yelp is that a good statistical analysis of the situation of whether they like a like something 
And the answer is, of course, no. If I was <laughs> in certain company, I would use explicitives about that. All that does is that is not nowhere near a, a good representation of uh, what people are saying about a, 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 a place. Uh, as you know, you you get. Uh, oh, and I could also add uh, rate my professor on this one. So let's, let's let's talk about that one too. Rate my professor. So Yelp and rate my professor and and actually faculty evaluations. Not, faculty evaluations aren't as bad, but it's it's very similar in that you have the initiative to go out and do something and then you analyze. So uh, for Yelp, same thing. You have to go online and do something. You're not getting a random sample of, of each person that used that restaurant or something. Uh, I had evaluations first, so let's talk about that. So nowadays for uh, student evaluations, it's online. Like it pops up on your canvas and you have to go and fill that out. Well, you're only going to get those who want to fill it out. And it's either usually you know good or bad, just kind of like Yelp. Uh, that doesn't give you a good indication of what's what's going on. Uh, with it completely online, like they send you an email and you had to go fill it out. Those were horrible. For a class of 40, 30, 30 to 40, we'd get like two or three, maybe maybe five evaluations. It means nothing for what I want to know as a teacher or an evaluator. Uh, it's a little better now. Uh, so in the, like in the fall, well, I'll just say at some point, because I'm trying to keep these for um, open to multiple semesters. So at some point I'll be evaluated, it's, it's, it, it's soon. Um, that's what they'll do. And, it, and you know, you're, we're interested in it. You have it every three years as a faculty and you want to see what's going on. Well, I'm suspect about the way they're doing it now because it's not a, a sample. It, it's, it's not, it used to be basically the entire population minus a couple because you would give it in class and then you'd get the entire class. And, and those were, those were pretty good. Like I, I had good I input on those, which is important to me. Uh, rate my professors the same way. You, it's just like Yelp. You get the good and bad. Um, basically, for rate my professor, the professors that are easy get great evaluations. I mean, that's it's it's been studied, it's been analyzed. Doesn't mean you can learn anything um, from the professor. Doesn't mean you're going to be successful in the next class. But guaranteed, it has almost completely to do with the, how easy the class is. Um, and I've seen this over and over. I can literally change the way I'm teaching to get different scores on that. Uh, and, and I could, I literally just, you could just bump grades up and you're going to get better, better ratings. Frankly, I don't look at that. I haven't looked at that in probably 15 years, maybe longer. Cause I just, I really don't care about that at all. I care about your learning, student learning and your success, uh, in the class and you moving on to be successful in life. That's what, what I care about, not scores. Uh, I care about those who respond back to me and say, hey, this was a great class. I enjoyed your, you know, I learned a lot, enjoyed your teaching, and um, look what I'm doing now. That's how I rate how I'm doing, not something like that. So these have nothing, to, almost nothing to do with statistics, uh, what we're talking about right now.